So let's talk about what it means for a graph to have a cycle. Um, so let's imagine I have a two node graph. So the idea behind a cycle on a graph is can I get back, let's, and, I'll, and I'll have names for these nodes in my beautiful handwriting. Um, can I get back to node A without reusing an edge in the graph? But in this case, the answer is no, because in order to get back to node A, I can get to node B from node A, but in order to get back to node A, I have to reuse that edge. So the simplest possible example of a graph that has a cycle actually needs to have at least three nodes. Because now I can get back to A by going from A to B to C and back to A. And you'll see if I do this, this cycle from A to B to C back to A uses all three edges in the graph, but it never reuses an edge. So this represents a cycle in this graph. Some graphs have cycles, some don't. Um, so for example, a linear graph like this does not have a cycle. No matter how many nodes I add to it, if I go off here, um, I'm never going to have a cycle because getting back to a node always involves some type of backtracking. And if I have branches off this that are themselves linear, right, like I have a few more nodes like this, this graph still does not have any cycles because if I start here, the only way to get back to this node, I can get here. If I start here, I have four paths away from this node, but there's no way to get back to node C without backtracking. I can get down into one of these branches that branch off from this point, but I can't get back to node C without reusing an edge. And so the, the trick, you know, we're going to implement an algorithm to do this. And the trick, the thing that's tricky about this is that I have to distinguish. So normally when I traverse a graph, I maintain a set and I keep track of which nodes I visited and I don't go back to a node that I visited. The tricky part when I'm doing cycle detection is I have to distinguish between two things. So let me make this graph a little bit simpler um, and we'll talk about it. So let's go back to my simple three node graph, A, B, and C, A, B, C. So in order to detect a cycle, I actually need to be able to detect that I can get back to node A, but I also need to be able to figure out how. I need to keep track of how I got back to node A. Because for example, if I explore the graph and I go from node A to node B and then node back to node A, that is backtracking. And that's something I still want to avoid, both so that my recursive algorithm will, will finish and not get stuck in a loop, but also because that doesn't represent a cycle. In contrast, if I can go from node A to node B to node C and then back to node A, when I get back to node A, I have to know that I've detected a cycle. So it's actually not sufficient to use a set here because a set can't distinguish between backtracking where I get back to node A and I just, but I just, uh, so what I, mean, I just visited node A from node B. So I went from node A to node B and now I'm going back. It can't distinguish between backtracking and an actual cycle that involves multiple nodes. And so what we'll see is we need to use a slightly different data structure here in order to facilitate uh, the ability to detect cycles. So using a set doesn't allow us to do that because a set can't distinguish between this, which is backtracking that we want to avoid, and this, which is a cycle that we actually want to notice, right? Uh, so we'll use a different data structure to solve this problem, and this is sort of the reason why. 